everybody and I welcome you on my channel I Dr. Tutsi. I am Dr. Tuki Asbanu Senova and today we're gonna discuss a topic cornea as a refractive medium. In this presentation we're gonna have a compact information about everything what we have to pay attention on when we consider a cornea for a LASIK surgeries or any other corneal refractive surgeries. This is a big topic so in order to have our videos just approximately for 15 minutes, I decided to split this presentation for three, in three parts. So this is gonna be the first part of the presentation and let's get started. So, first part. What are the refractive media of the eye? Light is actually refracted through four media. The first is the cornea, the clear layer on the outside of the eye, then the aqueous humor, liquid, then the lens, which can change shape slightly to allow objects near and far to focus. And then there is the vitreous humor, it's a liquid filling the most of the inside of the eye, all of which light needs to pass through before it reaches the retina. So this is a model which shows the refractive index of each medium and some physical dimensions. But since the cornea consists the 75% on the anterior surface of the eye and it takes uh, on it 75% of refractive power of the eye, we're gonna talk about the cornea today. So what is the cornea? Cornea is a avascular tissue and it's not isolated tissue. It forms together with the sclera and protects the intraocular structure of the eye. The cornea serves as the transparent window of the eye that allows the entry uh, of light, whereas the sclera provides a dark box that allows the formation of the image uh, on the retina. And as, as I said already, it forms anterior one-sixth part uh, of the globe. So let's talk about corneal structure. The anterior corneal surface is convex, convex and aspheric and it's not round, it's oval. So when we have a question why it's oval, just because uh, of the scleralization superiorly and nasally. So it presses from below and from the top and makes the shape oval. Another thing about corneal structure that it con consists of interwoven fibrous collagens, which have the mechanical strengths, which provide the mechanical strengths of the cornea. Then uh, what we have to know that the collagens, they have the regular arrangement and this provide transparency of the tissue. There are also another factors which play a big role in the transparency of the tissue and we're gonna list them. So it's that uh, fibers, uh, they have regular diameter, their interfibrillar distance less than a wavelength, uh, wavelength of light, and that the cornea is a vascular tissue, there is no vessels in the cornea, and uh, the relative dehydration. And another thing, of course, what we have to know, and I will talk about this, mention about that later in the slides, that nerves which uh, penetrate the cornea, they don't have myelin. This is another reason of the transparency. Then the corneal epithelium and cellular and chemical components of the conjunctiva and tear film prote provide the protection of the cornea. And another thing is smooth, that the cornea has the smooth surface and this smooth surface contributes to visual acuity. And as I said already, it, with two thirds of the eye, it provides their refractive ability. So here in the slide, we can see the refractive properties of the cornea. So from anterior surface and posterior surface, we have to know the vertical and horizontal measurements. So from the anterior surface, vertical and horizontal measurements are, differs, are different, but the posterior surface has the same measurement, vertically and um, horizontally. And the numbers is seen, uh, are seen in this slide. Next uh, refractive properties of the cornea is thickness. So the central thickness of the cornea is approximately from 500 until 550 uh, millimeter. 
uh, microns, I'm sorry. And periphery is uh, about 700 microns and there are some references where you can find that the thickness of the peripheral cornea might be even approximately 1000 microns or 1000 microns. Honestly, I've never seen any patient with a peripheral corneal thickness 1000 microns. Yeah. So radius of curvature, as we can see here in the slide, it's between 7.5 millimeters to 8 and refractive power normally is 40 to 44 diopter. <music> Optical properties of the cornea determined by transparency, surface smoothness, contour and refractive index. As we can see in this slide, I would like you to pay your attention on the contour because this is very important. When we talk about contour, we mean corneal shape. And what is important to know about corneal shape, that a cornea is prolate. So when we talk about the prolate surface of the cornea, we may think how many shapes of the cornea exist actually. So there are three basic shapes of the cornea, is oblate, spherical and prolate. And when we talk about refractive index in general, we consider refractive index of the air, T fluid, corneal tissue and aqueous humor. And all this number is 1.3. So this is the refractive index of the cornea. Then optical properties of the cornea. So I don't know, I wrote here in the slide, for example, you can see that, uh, that I mentioned like key points about corneal shape. Uh, maybe this is not a key point, but I consider it as a key point because when you talk about corneal shape, you just think immediately about spherical aberration. So what is spherical aberration? Here, for example, in this slide, you can see and you can estimate that a spherical aberration is an optical problem which occurs when all incoming light rays end up focusing at different points after passing through a spherical surface. And um, so normally we all have spherical aberration, but the asphericity of the cornea and the shape of the lens neutralize this aberration. So that's why we don't, uh, we don't have any blurred image. That's why the things we see, normally we see it very clear. As in this slide, for example, we could see a uh, E letter. But when we have the light, when we have the focus, uh, which w different focuses in our vision field and um, on the, below, the focuses which are uh, forming below the eye so the image is getting blurred like this E for example and we, there is no neutralized spherical aberration in this case and this, provide, this gives us actually bad visual quality. Another thing about uh, about corneal shape is a Q value parameter. This is a corneal asphericity parameter and there are examinations which provide us with this parameter. So what we have to know and I already mentioned that the surface of the cornea is prolate and the best uh, number of Q uh, parameter is minus 0.52. So by estimating the number of this parameter we can consider and uh, the condition and uh, the shape of the cornea. For example, in this slide, uh, there is a table which shows us, for example, when the Q value is minus 2, which is a lot, then we should consider a severe keratoconus or a patient with 5 diopteris PRK surgery history. Or when the Q value is minus 1, there is a mild keratoconus. So this is how we can estimate it based on the param this parameter. Next, and uh, yeah, of course, I couldn't skip this part. We have to talk a little bit about histology just briefly. Uh, as you can see in this slide, there are just six layers of the cornea, which is epithelium, Bowman's layer, stroma, Dewar's layer, distant membrane, and endothelium. And of course, the surface of the cornea covers by tear film. So uh, I'm going to just talk about the main function of, the, of each layer 
and uh, their characteristics. So corneal epithelium contains three types of cells, which are superficial cells, wing cells, and basal cells. And thickness is approximately 50 microns, but it var again, it varies from one indivi individual to another. So sometimes it's 40, sometimes it's 70 microns. So we can say that it's always 50 microns. The main function of this layer is a protection and barrier function, and of course diffusion. In the slide, for example, here you can also see um, in the picture uh, of hemidesmosomes and desmosomes. We're going to talk about all this um, detailed information in our future presentation when I will talk about the corneal physiology. But uh, Briefly, I can tell you the difference between desmosomes and hemidesmosomes. For example, in this slide, you can see that desmosomes, they are connecting basal cells which, with each other. And hemidesmosomes, they connect basal cells with lamina, basal lamina. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, go to the next slide. Bowman's layer. So this is a acellular membrane and basically it con contains collagen fibers type 1 and type 2. It sent, uh, the keratocytes, uh, the collagen fibers, they are synthesized from keratocytes of stroma. The thickness of Bowman membrane is approximately 12 microns and the main function is uh, that actually physiological role is unclear. But what we also can say that it's, uh, it doesn't regenerate. The next is stroma, the main part of the cornea, which contains 90% of the cornea. Uh, the thickness is very, uh, it varies between 500 and 550 microns. The cellular components mainly keratocytes and also it consists of collagen fibers and also proteoglycan. So the main function is a physical strength of the cornea, stability of shape and corneal transparency. Next is duas layer. This is a quite young layer because it was found out only in 2013 with the team from India and it was discovered by Harminder Singh Dua. Yeah, the thickness is approximately six, uh, between 6 to 15 microns. It's a very strong layer and the main function is drainage function. And yeah, because it takes part in the structure of the tissue that controls the flow of fluid from the eye. Decimate membrane. So this um, basement membrane of corneal endothelium it has the possibility of regeneration. It has a very mild attachment uh, with stroma and strong attachment with uh, endothelium. And the thickness is between 8 and 15 microns. So the thickness of this layer is increases by age, actually. In newborns, for example, it's uh, only 3 microns. But when the one gets elder, the thickness of this layer is also increasing. Uh, the main function is protection because this is the strongest layer in the cornea and it's really resistant to for chemical agents, infection and patholo any other pathological processes. The next endothelium. So it's a single uh, layer of hexagonal cells. Uh, the normal amount of these cells about 4000 cells in newborns in 200. Uh, 2,500 uh, cells per quadrat millimeters. Uh, these cells do not proliferate and the number of these cells decreases by age. The main function is barrier function and transport function. So, corneal nerves. The corneal nerves, uh, as we can see in this slide, just the main characteristics that it's a um, Ophthalmic division of the fifth nerve uh, provides the innervation of the cornea and the nerves enter at the periphery in a radial fashion. And the absence of a myelin sheet on the central cornea axis maintains a corneal transparency, as I already mentioned about that. So the main function is uh, the trophic function and the participation in the 
corneal transparency. And also what we have to know that neurons release diffusible factors that stimulate corneal epithelium growth, uh, which is very important for proliferation and differentiation of their cells. Corneal biomechanics. Actually, this is really, I have just one slide about this uh, information, but this is really a big topic for nowadays and very important topic. Many scientists are working on that uh, at the moment um, in the modern ophthalmology and there are also a few tools which are describing their parameters and now there are a team of scientists who is trying to find the main parameter which could describe actually the best information about corneal biomechanics and I also personally worked about this uh, worked on these parameters when I was in Shinagawa LASIK Center during my research fellowship and it's really very interesting and this is a topic which should be discussed of course separately and it's a big topic of discussion and of course we're gonna do this in uh, in the future so what should we know about corneal biomechanics? That the peripheral and anterior side of the cornea are more rigid than the central stroma. So what does that mean? So when we talk about corneal biomechanics, we basically talk about the stiffness of the tissue. That's why I mean, we're mentioning here now and I began the first sentences about the uh, rigid, um, uh, how rigid the tissue is actually. So the peripheral uh, cornea third of the stroma is more rigid than the central stroma. The next, why? Anterior third of the stroma are more rigid than the central uh, stroma. Why? Because the collagen fibers, they form the annulus of collagen uh, in the periphery of the cornea and the width of that is about 1.5 to 2 millimeters. This is the reason. Then uh, about the Bowman's layer, that only Bowman's layer and the stroma provides the majority of cornea's tensile strengths. Another thing that the young modulus determines the material stiffness, which is not the same in all orientations of the cornea due to its anisotropic material. Yeah, because we know when we talk about the stiffness of the cornea, we or not the cornea, just in general, the stiffness of the tissue, then we immediately think about young modulus, but it's a bit hard to, uh, to associate it with corneal thickness due to uh, the thing that the cornea is not an isometropic uh, material, actually. Next, the cornea becomes steeper with age. Uh, corneal biomechanic uh, for nowadays is being uh, used by ocular response analyzer and Corvus ST. Uh, I uh, worked on these parameters from these devices and um, there are many publications about ocular response analyzer parameters which uh, we're gonna talk also, I don't want to go into that details. And, but Corvus ST I think is more promising with all parameters which are discovering uh, at the moment. And there are also some additional parameters which are including um, our colleagues in order to define the best parameter for corneal biomechanics. And another thing what of course uh, we have to know for sure that the refractive surgery affects corneal biomechanics. And the compensation of corneal biomechanics leads to the complication after refractive surgery, which is ectasia. That's why that's the reason why we have to know about corneal biomechanics really good enough in order to prevent cases where there might be any ectatic disorder, disorder after any of corneal refractive surgery. This is basically the main idea and main purpose. That was basically it for the first part of the presentation. Thank you for your attention and I hope you really enjoyed uh, this part and it was really informative for you. We're gonna continue with the second part in the future presentation. Thank you for your attention and bye.